pharmacists and pharmacy staff in the UK do a tremendous amount of work directly with patients. Uh, but I think that people don't often think about the academic pharmacy work that goes on behind the scenes, helping to produce and help better manage the medicines that pharmacists use day to day. It's about developing new ways of working with medicines to help people so that the medicines are safe and effective. One of the most important pieces of research that we've done has been looking at how best to express how likely a side effect is to occur. When you ask patients what the most important information they want to know about their medicines is, side effects is nearly always the number one choice. I worry a lot about the side effects of the medicines. It's very important. In the main, you know, you're expecting people who are quite vulnerable to understand in, in some, sometimes quite, quite detailed information. But yeah, it's an issue, definitely. Uh, when you're taking something new into your body, you want to know possible side effects, yeah. The European Union produced a guideline which suggested that we should use words like very common and rare to describe how likely side effects is to occur. But our research showed that those words just didn't work at all. So our research has been looking at alternatives to using words like that. We found percentages didn't work too well. Lots of people have difficulties with numbers and percentages. And what does work well is using phrases like one in a hundred people, one in a thousand people. The internet is a, a wide source of information about medicines, but not necessarily good or readable information. I'd probably go to the internet. I live uh, opposite a pharmacy, so I'd, I'd go there. And so pharmacists play a big role in guiding patients to find good information, but particularly any information a pharmacist provides themselves, whether it be a medicine label or a leaflet that they give the patient, they need to be absolutely sure that it's clear and readable and that it meets patients' needs. Good medicines information can actually counteract some common misconceptions about medicines and there are many misconceptions. Uh, one is that you can't take paracetamol at the same time as ibuprofen. Uh, well you can take them both at the same time, there isn't a problem there. I think what's very important is have education and the pharmacist is the best person I think to really educate when it comes to drugs, to go through on adherence and how they should be taking their drugs, going through on information about why people take drugs. In any respiratory clinic, you'll find a large portion of patients are not using the inhaler in the appropriate way. And not only that, they don't necessarily understand precisely why they're taking an inhaler. The pharmacist is absolutely a, a fundamental member of the multidisciplinary team. Uh, myself and two colleagues at the University of Leeds decided that we could enhance our research by actually providing such testing for pharma companies. Luto Research, that's Leeds University testing organisation, Luto, uh, was formed and since then we've performed hundreds of user tests for pharmaceutical company leaflets. Forming a spin-out company is a very effective way to translate the knowledge into impact rapidly. We have developed a, a level of expertise in, here in the university and by linking up with the researchers in other key universities around the world, a real big impact. It doesn't just test the medicine leaflets that come uh, from pharma companies, but tests other pieces of medicine information, for example, things that a hospital trust might produce. Pharmacists visit patients on the wards every day as part of their routine work and they would talk to patients about their medicines, explaining how to take medicines safely and that's particularly important for patients such as those who've had kidney transplants or liver transplants where when the patient is discharged, taking medicines safely can fundamentally affect the effectiveness of their surgery. But of course it's quite difficult for the patient to remember everything that they've been told if that verbal information can be supplemented by written information. The patient can then take that away and use it at home and share it with their relatives and uh, other members of the family. Medicines used effectively are a tremendous power for good, but they're only going to work properly if people have good information to use them. So for patients, for carers, for pharmacists, for doctors, everybody who's involved in using medicines, nothing is more important than having good information for patients about those medicines. Mm -hmm.